2018 might be kind of a slow year. And it's not because I'm, I'm intentionally looking to make it a slow year, it's because it's... A horn at the top. I know there's a horn at the top, but that's like, not what I need. Like, there will be videos, don't get me wrong. But if you guys are looking for special events or stuff like that, that's kind of why, unfortunately, after we did the God of War gi giveaway and people loved it, we haven't really brought it back. Yeah. Is because we we're way too busy to run a giveaway right now. <laughs> so we'll probably do one later. But right now, it just doesn't work out. I mean, we're literally a week away from Christmas. And I'm just going to go ahead and point out to all the people who aren't, who don't have families, like th their own, their own families. Having a family on Christmas is basically like pulling teeth because you will spend most of the day getting, getting places and then trying to keep your kids in line. Yeah. So that's kind of a, a complicated situation. I guess I'm going to do the windmill last. That's fine. I'm going to the bird cage. I'm not complaining and I'm not a Scrooge, so don't don't give me that. Uh -huh. I, I love me some Christmas, but... Eh, I'm a total Scrooge. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you have a reason to hate Christmas. Yeah. You have to deal with the retail side of it, so that's justified. I was there with you. Like, I did retail. I've also done movie theaters. Movie theaters also suck around Christmas. Yeah. Especially if you have, like, a really big holiday year. Like, years like this where, you know... What, what was it we had? Like, a couple of movies got delayed from December into February. Like, Battle Angel. Was Battle one Angel, one. and I want to see... I think Captain Marvel was initially supposed to be coming out in November. And now it's been delayed into 2019. But you could have had a... You could have had a bad movie year this year. And you didn't. This is actually one of those few years as, like, working in movie theaters is a blessing. Yeah. Because you just... You have... Ralph Breaks the Internet, which is the obligatory kids hit. And then you have Aquaman coming out this weekend. <sighs> so that's the obligatory superhero hit. Yeah. And that's it. Like, everybody else is going to go see movies that came out months ago. In fact, I would not be surprised if all of a sudden, over the holiday weekend, we see tons of showings for, like, Fantastic Beasts 2. And... and uh, I wouldn't even be surprised if people brought back Infinity War to theaters. Or Black Panther. Yeah, Black Panther especially. Yeah, that one makes a lot of sense. And there technically is something else that our, our viewership wanted us to talk about, but I don't know if I want to talk about it. Oh, uh, what? Uh, our thoughts on the Patreon situation. I have no idea what's going on with Patreon. Um, so... We didn't talk about Alex Jones and his deplatforming, but apparently uh, Patreon, starting with, I think it's Sargon of Akkad, was the first one. Okay. But now we have a bunch of Patreons being targeted because of, quote, hate speech. And we're not talking, like, getting fined or anything like that. We're talking outright shutdown. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, unfortunately, that's creating a bit of a situation for the YouTube community. Like, they didn't already have enough things to worry about. Uh, where now people are having to look at, can we actually make Patreon work anymore? And that's that's a tough question to answer. It really is. I I I will say like my opinion on the matter is I'm pro free speech, so I do think it's dumb that Patreon would ban them uh, uh, outright. It's their show. Or you jumped down my throat. Um, it is their call. Yeah, it I know. It is their call. Do I think it's the right move? No. I don't. But that's that's their call to make, not mine. So, like, because I've kind of gotten into this ever since, I think it was a couple of years ago, I admitted that I, I did watch a few of Sargon's videos and and found myself 60-40 right. in, in agreement with him. But I still had some problems with it. But he had the right to say it. He had yeah. the right to be able to say all that stuff. And yes, people can make the argument of like, well, he didn't have the right, he doesn't have the, the right to be able to earn money off of it. Well, technically he does. He has, like, if he's bringing forth some good ideas and they're worth of value, then yes, he has the right to be able to make money, or he has the right to be able to charge. But 
it just depends on the organization that he's charging with. Mm. Patreon doesn't agree with him. Yeah. So they have the right to silence it. Well, it's really tough. Because... Well, the other thing that people are getting mad about is that... Because you have people so, like Alex Jones and... I, I should probably point this out. The stuff that uh, Sargon got banned for... Right. ...didn't technically happen on Patreon. And the reason that Patreon gave was that basically it did. Yeah. And so, to give a little bit of context, the offending action, first of all, happened earlier this year. So we're already having another stupid deal where people are going backwards in time to find dirt on you. Well, uh, we're, let's, uh, it is we're, yeah, early, we're, we're, we're talking early this year, year as, opposed to 10. as opposed to 10 years. Yeah. So it happened earlier this year and he, uh, I can't remember what the conversation was about, but he was basically, uh, he dropped an end bomb oh, shit. in the fact that he said, what, what, what you're basically saying with your argument is that we're a bunch of white men. Oh, and yeah. It was not on his channel, by the way. It was on a smaller YouTuber's channel uh, who asked Sargon to come on and, and do an interview, and he did. Yeah. So it was technically not even on his YouTube channel where this happened, and it wasn't on Patreon, which the, uh, the reason that they gave was basically that it had to have happened on Patreon for him to get banned, and it didn't. So, yeah... People, just don't Detail. use that. Don't use that fucking word. People, just don't. Okay. Well, okay, I, that, I, I get that word, too. That's a word that should have gone away in the '60s, and I don't know why people still insist on using it today. Oh, it should have gone away longer. longer Obviously longer, that. but I'm saying the '60s because you know that's when the civil rights movement happened in the states. But it's just like, don't use that word, okay? You're not edgy. You're not cool. It's just you're just a moron who's using a racial slur because you think it's cool and edgy because people used it ages ago. In this time and in this day and age, don't use it. Okay? Get it? Got it? Good? Good. Yeah. Good. I <laughs> but I'm also going to make the... Okay, I'm, I'm going to be the, the stick in the mud. That's not the only word that should go away. Yeah. Alright? And before everybody ca sits there and goes, well, the end bomb is the worst thing ever. Well... I would like to point out that um, there are other derogatory terms that other races use that shouldn't exist either. Okay? So, I I'm pretty sure that I don't need to explain what a gaijin is to Alex. And, yeah. it, and in that culture, it is a derogatory term. Yeah. All right? That shouldn't exist either. Oh. Even though there's a certain Goomba that has made quite a bit of a killing on that word. Well, I don't know. Isn't it just a word that means you're a foreigner? Foreigner, alien. Yeah, I guess it, it's, I it's basically a word that makes a generalization. You are foreign to this culture and ergo, we should not like you. I have, to be honest, I know what the word means, but I don't know the, like the history and context of the word. Like, like otaku, I know what otaku is and why there's, yeah. there's a stigma around otaku because it does come with the the perception that you're a shut-in and a lot of that has to do because there was the otaku killer the i think he was a serial killer in the like back in the mid 90s and yeah, yeah but the original intent for it including like and I, like how many gaijin Goodman movie, uh, videos have you seen i've seen a lot but have you ever heard him talk about like how how he would get referred to as a gaijin yeah in japan I, i've okay, heard it's his... a like Unfortunately, guys, that it's a derogatory term. It's, yeah. it's considered outsider. And so if you want the end bomb gone, I'm going to say, no, you shouldn't stop there. You should also get rid of all the other terms that other races have for other races. Okay? <laughs> well, I don't think anybody's arguing that. I'm just... And they should be. That's what I'm saying. They yeah, should be arguing nobody, that. I mean, nobody's arguing... I guess I should have said nobody's arguing against that. Just... I'm saying N-word because it... People. Well, those cultures are arguing against yeah. it because they don't think that that they're that bad. And well, I'm saying, no, they are. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> like, you know, if, if you don't like the N-word, well, Kraka is pretty much the black equivalent of that. Yeah. All well, right? unfortunately, I can't I can't do anything about the Japanese. Well, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I, I am not expecting you to be all, like before people go. You are violating the politics rule. Brr, brr, brr. No, no, I'm just I'm pointing that out. I can't. That, that's why he got banned. And. Am I saying he should have used that word? No. But again, this is a, a whole other thing of like it's Patreon's it's Patreon's uh choice. They can do this. 
if they want to shoot themselves in the foot, they can do this. Which, it right now is looking like, yeah, it, they kind of are. There's a lot of content creators on Twitch and YouTube that are now leaving the platform because they, they can't trust Patreon anymore. The other thing that doesn't help this uh, that I should point out is the creator of Patreon, when he tried to explain it, used a weird term for it, uh, but he, this is how they watch all the Patreon content. Ow. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what the actual term for it is, but it, it's, it sums out to an anagram for mob. An anagram for mob? Uh, let me see if I can bring it up. Like mobster, mafia? What? Basically mob rule. Oh, mob rule. Uh, Run country? Yeah. Run country. Uh, Patreon. That, that'll probably bring it up for me. Actually, did you hear? Uh, I know neither of us really follow much PewDiePie no no noise news, uh, well, but uh, same thing. Um, yeah. PewDiePie noise news. So, yeah. uh, PewDiePie. We don't like PewDiePie. Leave us alone. Yeah, I don't like him either. But anyway, so PewDiePie was on his channel. He's kind of doing a shout out to other creators and like content or you know just videos he's come across that he liked, and he got he got a lot of crap for. The fact that he shouted out a video on a channel that just, unfortunately, so happened to feature some really bad stuff on it, too. And he wasn't shouting out to those videos in particular. He just said, oh, this is a video from this person I happen to like. And so everybody jumped on him about it. And by the way, that's not an endorsement. Yeah, I don't think he wasn't. A just because I like... I, I, I hate to use this as an example because people are going to immediately jump down my throat on it, but uh, me actually going out and saying, uh, you know, the Shadow Blazer made this interesting video about Dot Hack. If I say it that way, that's not endorsing it. Yeah. If I then come out and say, like, this is an amazing video that this guy made on Dot Hack timeline being explained, that's endorsing it, kind of thing. And you have to look at the language and how it was said be able to interpret whether or not he was endorsing the content. Yeah. And in some cases, it is possible people to endorse the video, and but not, not the content. Not the content itself. Yeah. Well, you know, people still like Roman Polanski movies and well, Polanski... <laughs> I don't think I've actually ever seen one, but I'd have yeah. to double check it, because the only one that I know of that's Roman was The Pianist. The Pianist. And um, I've never seen it. I think Chinatown is his... I thought I'd seen the penis, but the, the yes, I thought I'd seen the penis. The penis. Uh, no, I thought I had seen the pianist at one point and never seen it. Turns out I, I had. Yeah, it's not a very good movie. Yeah. I think I I saw it. I thought it was but pretty. Alex, it got a war. Obviously, yeah. it has to be good, right? No. <laughs> I thought it was kind of boring. Kind of a boring. <laughs> what's What's interesting to one person is not to another. I mean, it's almost like that's a rational way of yeah. being. I mean, I'm somebody who loves historical films and period dramas and whatnot, but I thought The Penis was really dull. You thought The Penis was really... Nah, <laughs> I'm not making The Penis joke anymore, guys. Um, so in walks this musician, this tiny musician, and, a 12, and he pulls out a 12-inch pianist. Whoa, I can't tell that joke. <laughs> I can't remember how it actually goes. It's just a Krusty the Clown bit that he did yeah. once. Crap, I'm looking for the, the term. It, it's an it, it's an uh, anagram, or not an anagram, but um, an, crap. What's an the word I'm looking for? Uh, for? Anecdote? Um, well, it, the way that it works is that it's M-O-B, and M -O -B. so if you put them together, it's mob. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of people have basically been saying, oh, so you're basically making this decision on Patreon via mob rule. Oh, uh, mob rule, yeah. Um, um, so, a look. But he, he used a more PR term for it. Okay. And by the way, it's the car agents and they're in love. Three, two, one. <laughs> you're a little too manic when you do that. Because <laughs> it's fun. It's fun, but you're just a little too on the manic yeah, side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I just love the fact they did that. I'm just like, you know, you're trying to get away with, right? You're for breakfast? <laughs> yes. Yes, they do. Yes. Yes, they do. And we, and we totally forgive them for that. Hello. Hello, Express Owl. I see. I, I know also... that it was on. Uh, they brought country on. I always forget where to go here. Dave Rubin's show. Oh, this is going to be fun. 
Uh, let's see if I can actually just put it in. Oh, that's why. Because it's not spelling it right. Damn it. <laughs> Autofill on Apple. <laughs> leave me a, leave me the fuck alone. Leave me alone. In the meantime, talk amongst yourselves. Uh, I'll give you a topic. <laughs> give me a topic. Butter or margarine? Which one do you like? Uh, I don't know. I guess either. <laughs> Everyone's like, what? <laughs> Mayonnaise. Or what, what's the other one? May mayonnaise or Miracle Whip? Which one are you on the side of? I don't like mayonnaise at all, so I wouldn't care for either. You don't like the free lard that's in there? <laughs> that's what I always got told as a kid is like, you like mayonnaise? That's just lard. <laughs> I don't know. I only like mayonnaise on like one thing. That's it. So it doesn't really work out that way. But yeah, it, like it's it's a weird term that when John Contrary was being interviewed by Dave Rubin, he used it. And so at that point, people have been digging that out for the Sargon banning. And it's basically like it's. It's like mobile or. Yeah, mobile observable behavior or something like that. Hmm, OK, where it's basically saying Big Brother's watching you. Oh, uh, yeah. Kind of thing. I might be wrong about the M, but it's like observable be like it, it could be like manifest observable behavior. And so at that point, that's why uh, they're they're now watching you from that angle. And it's just like, OK, well, if you put this all together, it's mob. So you're basically running things by mob rule. Well, welcome to corporate America, everybody. <laughs> Every comp. Guess what? Every company is going to have that PR now. The internet's not ni it's not 1999. The internet's not niche anymore. Are you telling me that Al Gore did not, in fact, invent the internet? <laughs> not precisely, but he never claimed he did either. That's a misquote. People often attribute to Al Gore. It's funny to say, but he never actually said it. Yeah, but he's he's jokingly taking credit. Not really. Cause oh, yeah, no, he has. No. There, there are, like, radio shows out there. He's like, oh, yeah, I totally did that. Oh, I guess he's and just... he was snarking. I'm not it... saying he was serious. He was snarking about oh, yeah. it. Because really what it is is Al Gore helped legislation that... With legislation that helped pers essentially personify... I don't know personify is the right word, but basically he's just among the congressmen who essentially helped structure so the So while internet. he was doing that, his wife was trying to ban Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, they, they happen roughly around the same time. Yeah. Um, the 90s. So I'm just like, the, the 90s. The 90s? The 90s. The 90s Where were you could awesome. Rip a, rip a guy's head off from his spine, and it was okay in video games. <laughs> okay, it's still okay now. I mean, but, yeah. yeah. I don't think anything's really changed on that front. No, not really. I mean, for crying out loud, I, I, like the Mortal Kombat 11 trailer, geez. It's not even silly anymore, people. They're getting really nasty. I know. It's like, I can't. I just can't play new Mortal Kombat now. It's, I, I, I mean, I like the story mode that, that the new games are implementing. It's actually very cool to be able to see this world get fleshed out. Yeah. But, yeah, the fatalities, I, I can't even watch them anymore. Uh, I just get, I get squeamish. Ever since the... Uh, Noob Cybot one that happened in MK9. I, I can't watch him anymore. Oh, Adam, I need a guide. I'm, I can never remember this one. W which one specifically are we working on? Uh, yeah. Alpine Skyline, the birdcage. Yeah. Ah. Oh, there you go. There we go. Sound the horn of Gondor, Alex. <laughs> the horn of Gondor. And now it's been sounded. There we and go. Now we can go and get ah, the timepiece. I always forget where to go on these ones. The windmill I remember the most because I remember spending like the longest because the platforming's a little tricky there. But we'll see that when we see that. All right, so let's let's end this thing, Alex. Let's do this. It's time to can this bitch. I mean, can this fish. That's what or Jason put, or said, put right? Or put this in the can. <laughs> One of the two. You know, kind of like that craptastic Sonic movie is going to be in a little bit. <laughs> Probably so. Ah! Well, you know it's in the can. I'm... Whether whether you want to acknowledge that it's good or not. Yeah. Uh, you know that that yep. thing's in the can somewhere. And Woo! Oh! <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> no, don't wake it what up. What does she do? Shh, shh, shh. You've cleared the birdhouse. Not the birdcage. Not no. associated with that movie. No. And birdcage people, don't sue us. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, or I guess we should oh, say... Oh, no, Alex. It's or allergy season. Yeah. Not associated with that movie, or rather movies, because there's the original French version, and then there's the American version. Oh, no, Alex. We might actually have to deal with... Allergy season. Allergy season. Video game allergies. They're the worst. But unfortunately, we are out of time. Why so, we always have to be out of time? I know. So, so when we come back, we will continue questing in Alpine Skyline.